Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Father Conversations on this glorious Sunday afternoon. I am your host, Alina Chung, and I am privileged to be in your presence as we celebrate this afternoon, and as we celebrate all that God is doing and all that he wants to do and all that he plans to do in your life. And I hope you are enjoying this day because it is one day, it's an opportunity, and it's a day for God to do great things and for you to do great things because why? You are empowered. Thank God. I hope you got our promo that we're having now. We're trying to promote it every program for as much as we can this year. It's our Father Reach. And like I said, we are reaching out to the world. Father Reach the world. And we just, while we were creating the promo, it came up and I was like, oh, isn't that awesome? Father Reach the world. And what a more, uh, uh, what do you call that? Mm, prominent or better time than the times we have right now. Our world is in turmoil. We had a pandemic and now what do we have? We have a war that doesn't even make any sense. But that's what the Bible says. In the last days, there will be wars and rumors of wars. But what we are supposed to do is to stay focused, stay on our mission and do what God has called us to do so that we can reach the people God has called us to reach. So at Father Reach, that's what we're about. Reaching people, reaching the people who are uh, uh, despondent, reaching the people who are uh, trafficked, reaching the people who are in bondage. And like I said, human trafficking is one way, but there are all kinds of things going on. And we are looking for ways to reach people and reach the young, deliver them from the bondage that the devil seem, seems to want to put them under. So they will not understand their empowered value, not live their best life, not be who God has called them to be, not impact the world as God has called them to. And it's our mission to make sure that does not happen and we impact as many people as possible to ensure that people live the life that God has called them to live. So Father reaches on to remember check our um, website favorofagreatgod.com. It's long but I kept it long because the message is favor of a great God. You have God's favor with you and that favor surrounds you as a shield to ensure that you are everything God wants you to be, to ensure that you do everything God has called you to do and to ensure that your voice is not silenced, that you are able to do and say everything God has called you to say and impact the people God has created you to impact. So check out our website. Remember, there's a QR code on the very first. Let me just, probably I need to get on the website. So I could, I like to do that because I think sometimes it gives a visual to what we're saying. A lot of times we're talking and it's just like, well, go there, go there, go there. But sometimes you need to see it. So you can probably say, well, hey, this is where I need to do. This is where I need to be. So hold on one second. Let me get my little share situation going here. Where is it? That's not it. No, hold on. Let me get my screen shared here so we can take you to the website. And this is our website. Our screen is new. We just changed this. And so that's do it. your homepage. Sorry. <laughs> and this year we're, we're, we've already started uh, getting ready for March because you know we have like about two more days for February. Awesome month. Hope you enjoyed your Black History. Hope you celebrated your Black History Month. Hope you celebrated Valentine's Day, which is a day of love. And hope you enjoyed it to the max because we are celebrating people, our impact. This month coming is Women's History Month. And we called it Her Story. Women are going to be sharing their story. How how they have found ways uh, to enjoy the freedom they have and to use that freedom to impact others. It's all about empowered value. Women have value. Men have value. Children have value. Everybody has value. And we want to show that value for it. We want you to enjoy that value and impact others and speak into the lives of others and liberate others and all that good stuff. So this month is Women's History Month coming up in March. And so we have a whole a little clip here of why, how it came about. And it was in the year 1908, I didn't even know that. Just doing my research, I found it out. So that's in the front of our page. And right below that, you're going to see this QR code right here. And that is the QR code that you can take your phone Put it up to the QR code. If you have the QR app, scan it. It takes you straight to our donations page, which is where you give whatever you want to give. And we, nothing is uh, frowned upon. If it's a dollar, if it's 10, 20, 15, 30, a million, whatever, we want it all because we have things to do. And the more I see the, the, the drama in our world, the terror, the, the turmoil, the nonsense, I'm just calling it as I think it is, uh, that's when I realize we need to empower people. So they could be who God has called them to be. So don't, they don't waste their lives doing mess. That doesn't make any sense. How do you value people and say you value people? And then at the same time, 
You try to devalue them by infringing on their rights and taking over their country for whatever reason. We don't even understand. But it's all about the power hunger. It's all about that crazy stuff. We have, if you're fighting to liberate people, I'm all for that. Because there's sometimes you have to fight. And that's why the people of Ukraine right now, they have to fight. Because they have to fight to maintain their freedom. And that's what's worth fighting for. But when you're fighting to infringe your rights about, upon people and take away their freedom so you can feel, I don't know what it is they're trying to feel, because this is one of the free, the, the, these times are one of the freest times we've had in human history. And when you're trying to infringe on the rights of others, so you could, whatever it is you're saying you're doing, it doesn't make sense. Freedom is for everyone and people should enjoy their freedom and we should fight to ensure that people stay free because that's what God came to give us. So you go on the QR code, you scan it, you, you get right on the page, you give whatever you have, and it will go towards us creating what we want this Father Reach our organization to be about, reaching people, setting people free, setting the people free from human trafficking. If we have to set them free from, 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 from whatever is going on, I don't know. All these are parts of the thing that when, we, when this whole, this whole uh, organization is set up, it will help to liberate people, help to liberate them into their empowered value, help to keep them free and give them the resources they need to maintain that freedom and to also impact others and give them their freedom too. And that's what we're talking about. So if you go on here, it will take you to our giving, I think what it says, giving and funding. So when you click on the QR code, that's where it takes you to. But if you do it, you won't have to do all the clicking. You just go straight on there, click, and you end up right here. Right here, aye, aye, aye. right here. And you see this little thing, it tells you how much you wanna give one time, monthly, quarterly, annually, whatever you want, custom amount. And you go, you click, you add your amount and you keep on going, it takes you to where you put your, whatever information you have to put in so you can give to us. And every amount is appreciated and we thank you in advance. Then we have our father market here where all everything that we have are being sold. We have our t-shirts, we have our mugs, gift cards if you wanna give gift cards. We have uh, our, this is one of our, our first ventures at having an online, an ebook. And it was my first one I ever did. It was neat. It was a neat book. And we have a lot coming in the future, audiobooks where we want to impact you reading in your mind, in your body, and in your spirit. That's what we're about. We have our masks here, which we created during this whole from, I think it's been out since 2020, where you can buy a mask, keep yourself safe, and at the same time, help uh, contribute to our Father Reach organization and help impact others. And we call it giving the gift of empowered value. Giving the gift of empowered value. We have our shoes here, and the proceeds go towards giving. Well, all the Father Reach items, everything goes towards Father, Father Reach. The other items, portion, proceeds of them go towards Father Reach. So you go on here, we have our Father Box, we have our candles, it's the first one we put out, we have more to come. We have our Empowered Value Creative Master Plan, which is what we use as the workbook for our course, Empowered Value Courses. Don't forget it. It's out there. I'll show it to you before we leave. This was our February box. Uh, uh, it's like our uh, what a Valentine's Day box with all the love and the chocolates and the, the little sparkling cider and the candle and your little, and you have an old little champagne flute as well. So we, we made that into a very special situation. We have our Father Magazine tote right here. Proceeds again goes to words, uh, Father Reach, and also to improve this organization. And finally, we have an Empowered Value t-shirt. And that this one is exclusively for the course, Empowered Value. And you're going for us to uh, forward to Empower Value. And every time you wear it, people can know you are Empowered Value and you're here to empower value in others. So that's all we have in our marketplace right now. We as we come up with different ideas, we add things, but everything you purchase here helps to build up our organization and also to build up the lives of others, build up empowered value in others. And we're coming up with that, all these creative ideas we have, and we have great work to do and big things for the future. So that's one of the main things we promote here. And we want you to go get it so you can help others be all that God has called them to be. Back to the homepage is where we're going to see our, make sure this thing doesn't come up. Hold on. Our courses, hold on one second. Our courses, you go all the way to the bottom here and you'll see the courses. Empowered Value Forum course, that's our uh, initial original course where we start the ball rolling to teach you how to maintain your empowered value and how to 
demonstrate that empowered value because a lot of people don't understand that. And when you don't understand that, you could be like what's going on right now in, in the Russian situation. And then we have an empowered value, the workroom, be your business. And that's our business course where we bring our empowered value to our business, to our homes, to our personal finances, to our business finances, wherever we go, we are trying to be. And my goal in this for myself and for you is financial freedom. When I learned how we could be free as a people, we could be living and not having to work 24 hours a day. We could be working now to be free in the future where we're taking care of ourselves and others because now our money is working for us. That was something that revolutionized my life and I am hoping it will revolutionize yours because now we can see how to be everything God has called us to be and do everything God has called us to do and still fund it because we're doing everything the right way with our finances. So that's our two courses here. You click on them. Let me show you what happens. You click on them. It takes you to the Empowered Value Forum home, and then you pick your courses here and the prices, and you go from there and you start your education. So that's what we want for you. And we've been doing all these big things. I also want to also promote my it's a Rapture Time broadcast. That's my dad, Reverend James Bell, and he has it every Fridays at 2 p.m. So if you click on this right here, you come on the website, you can go straight to it. Also, it's on YouTube. And it's on YouTube, you look for Rapture Time Broadcast and you see all the different, every week he has it. Also for our program here, we have it on YouTube as well. So you just look at Father Conversation, we have the dates. So you can see all the dates that are on there. And every week we have it. And so you can go back and look through it and you can share it with others. So these are the things we have out there. And we hope, don't forget our financial coaching and consulting. If you have people out there that need to be, con that needs to have some info as an organization, whether it's an individual and you want some coaching and you want some consultation in the area of your business or your personal life, we are here for you. So click on that. You can, you can create an appointment, set up an appointment and we'll come out to you. If we need to come via Zoom, we can do it. If we need to come virtually, via Zoom. And if you need to come in person, we can schedule that. But right now we're more focus on the virtual because of the, the climate that's going on in our world right now. Everything's not open, open, open. So if we start that way, then we can maneuver, go maneuver into where we can have a personal consultation in person as is needed and as safe as possible. There we go. And of course, our father conversations every Sundays at 2 p.m. So this is what we have on our homepage. And that's what we're hoping we have here made provision for you. Come on our website, check out. We're always doing changes. We always have new things on here and come out and, and see what's on there so we can impact your life. And hopefully you can impact the lives of others wherever you go. That's what we are all about. Okay, done all the promo stuff. Now for our topic today, and it's empowered freedom. Like I said, every week, whatever ministers to me for that week, I try to figure out what am I going to talk to people about? This week, we couldn't get away from it. It's just all over the news, everywhere you go. It's a war. It's a bombing of people. It's, it's useless stuff that's taking place. And sometimes you wonder why are things taking place like that? And it's because, again, lack of understanding of your empowered value. When you don't understand the value you have, you infringe on the rights of others, and now you're infringing on their value and trying to devalue them so you can be whatever it is that you're trying to be, but you're not being everything God has called you to be. Because if you are being that, you won't need to do all the different negative things that are taking place. So we're looking at empowered freedom. Empowered freedom. Before I start anything, I usually try to look at the definition of the word, just to try to because sometimes you have like a, a vague definition, but when you look at the real definition, it gives you even more insight into what you're talking about. Okay, freedom. One definition, the power or right to speak, act, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. The power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. Another definition, the absence of subjection to foreign domination or despotic, which means tyrannical, government. Another, see, I want more time. 
the absence of subjection to foreign domination or despotic, which means tyrannical government, unruly, cruel, uh, manipulative government. And that's what's going on right now. Absence of subjection. If, if you're subjected to a despotic government, you're not free. To be free means you're not under the ter terrain or the, 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 the rule of such a government and you're free to do whatever you want. When you're not, when you're under that kind of government, you're not free to do whatever you want. And that's not what our goal is. And the final definition, the state of not being imprisoned or enslaved. The state of not being imprisoned or enslaved. That is the definition of freedom. Free without restraint, without hindrance. And so when we, we talk about we are free and we have freedom, that's what we're talking about. And so that's the thing that we have to fight to maintain. The scripture for today is Galatians 5 and verse 1. Galatians 5 and verse 1. And it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So what God, what you see in the scripture is, first of all, you're free, but you can become entangled again. See, a lot of times when we get free, we think, oh, and I'm free and I have nothing, just, just bask in the freedom and there's nothing to do. No, you can become entangled again. And that's why Jesus is saying, I have freed you in your mind and your body and your spirit, but don't you take that for granted and allow something or someone to come up again and entangle you again. And that's what's going on in Russia. Russia was a union called the Soviet Union, where you had tyrannical reign, where you had communism and people were subjected. They were not free. They couldn't do what they wanted to do. They had to do what the government told them to do. They couldn't buy what they wanted to buy. They had to buy what the government told them. It was all about constraint and control. Once they got liberated from that, the union was broken up. So everybody had their own individual country. That's why you have Ukraine as one country. You have Russia. I think it's, I'm not sure if it's Soviet. I think it's Russia they call that the main one. Then you have the Czechoslovakia. You have all these different little countries that are now independent and on their own apart from the union. And that's why the union was, that's why the, the freedom came because they realized if they had to be free, they had to separate from that and rule their own selves and have their own leadership so they can be free. Well, now, for whatever reason, Russia, the leader of Russia decided he wants to come and take over Ukraine again. And he was, I think he said he has two little, two states that want him to come over. And But you cannot rule a country because two states want you, even if they do, and I don't believe they do. But even if they do, you can't come and take a whole country for two states. That's not the majority. But when you want to control people, you will find any way to do that. And that's what's going on there right now. So the people have been made free. And they were made free by a lot of fighting and a lot of different things that happened with different countries coming together to help liberate them. Well, now, that's what the Bible said. Now they have to fight for their freedom to make sure they don't become entangled again with a yoke. The same thing is for our spiritual. God, Jesus came and he liberated us. He freed us. He died on the cross. He rose again. He gave all that stuff for us. But if we don't watch ourselves and watch the devil, which is our enemy, we can become entangled again because we take our liberty for granted. Freedom is not is something that's given, but it can be taken away if you don't understand the value of it. If you don't understand what happened to give it to you. If you don't understand the people that died to make sure that you have that freedom and you don't value what they did for you, you can become entangled again because you don't understand what you have. That's why you have to have an understanding. When you understand freedom, it empowers you to do so many things. It empowers you to be. It empowers you to do. It empowers you to say, because now you understand, I'm free, baby. And I ain't going to let you bind me. And if you see something that looks like bondage, because you understand what freedom is, it says, oh, no, you will not do this to me. I will not accept what you're doing because that looks like what we have. And we don't want that again. So that's what the people are saying. They know what they came from. They, if you have a lot of people who come to America 
and from wh whatever communist country they come because a lot of countries out there it could be in Europe it could be in even in South America there have been some communistic countries and so when they come for that and especially when people fight and give them freedom and you hear when they come here and they're doing different things you notice that they act towards freedom different than us who've been free all our lives who never knew what it was to be under a regime that will not allow you to say what you want, to do what you want, to live how you want, make the money you want, have your own business. They, when, they, when, you, when they come here, they have a different perspective and a different way they act and a different way they speak. And you notice that whenever certain things come up, even with our elections or our government, there are certain things that they will hear that will trigger them to say, oh, no, we don't want that because that's what we came from. Whereas we just think it's, oh, it's just a little something they're saying. They said, uh-uh. We recognize that because that's what we came from. That's what we left our countries to come here from. We loved our countries, but we did not like the rulership of our countries because it kept us bound. And we wanted to be free. So they see America as a land of the free home of the brave because they can come here, have their own businesses, make their own money, decide where their children go to school, what they do, what they don't do. And nobody has to tell them what to do. So when they come here, they have a different understanding than us because we, they have a different experience. So when we're just saying, oh, you could just come here and you could do this and you can march the streets and you could do this. They're like, uh oh, that looks like what we came from. We don't want that. And they will march in the streets to make sure that doesn't happen. Why? Because that's what they came from. So when you've been liberated and you're free, you have to recognize things that come to bind you. Because a lot of times people don't understand. And I think a lot of times we in the West are very spoiled. I mean, I came from the Caribbean, but I came from a free nation. I don't even understand what slavery is. I mean, I understand prejudice because I mean, it's, it, it was my country is ruled by um, African, well, Afri African West Indian, I guess what you call us. And so, but we never, we were free. <laughs> we, we know what it is to have black people in leadership. We understand that, we appreciate that. The most prejudice we had was in the, well, you know, most in our, most of our African, even African American and our black culture, there's always a little prejudice in the lighter colored and dark in complexion, that kind of thing we always, that's always been there. And that's from, a, I guess, from a slavery mentality. I'm not sure what it is, but it's always been there. So that's the most prejudice we've had to encounter. It's among ourselves. So I don't even understand. I don't have a problem with the Caucasians or whatever. I'm just like, there are other people, but it's not like I feel like they're over me or they're better than me because I came from a country where the leadership was black. If you came to the country as a white person, you were not in the, you were not in the majority, you were in the minority. So I don't understand that whole dynamic. I love everybody, every race, every culture. I have no problems with any race or any culture because I understand my value. See, when you understand your value, all that stuff doesn't make any sense because no matter what the color of your skin is, your, your value is so high that there's nobody else like you. Nobody else is gonna impact the world like you. And that's how God made it. Your fingerprint is unique. Your DNA is unique, your impact is unique, your power is unique, and nobody can take that from you. So when you understand that, trying to figure out if you're light skin or dark skin or what's better, that doesn't make any sense because it's all, first of all, we're all spirit. We're just live in this body. So everything big about us is in our spirit, man, which cannot be seen, which cannot be handled because we're spirit living in a body. The body decays. But the spirit is everything. That's where your intelligence, that's where you're thinking, that's where you're understanding, that's where everything you are lies. In the spirit man, which cannot be handled or touched. That's it. The, the, the body is just a casing that's here for a few years. And then once you die, it decays and you're gone. And your spirit man goes now to, to where God has to decide heaven or hell and that kind of stuff. But your spirit. So when you understand your value, color of skin don't even make any sense. You know, it's, it's like my color of my skin is not limited to anybody else. And you have to get that because a lot of people don't get that. And they allow situations where people say to put them in bondage where they can't be all that God has called them to be because they listen to some, I won't call them a fool, but some person saying something to them and trying to tell them who and how much they can and cannot be. No, 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 no. That can only be done by God. Because he made you. He made you with a purpose to fulfill a value that nobody else can fulfill. 
When you get that, the, the world is your oyster. And no man, Jack, Tom, Dick, or Harry can come and tell you anything else. If they come and tell it to you, said the last time I checked, you weren't God. So if you're not God, please do not try to tell me what I can and cannot do. And so you have to have that concept in you and it has to be ingrained in you. And that's why Jesus said, now that you're free, do not become entangled again to bondage. Do not become entangled to what people say, what people do, what people, what people act. You cannot get there because you're supposed to be free because Jesus died to make you free. That's what empowered freedom does. It empowers you to live the life that God has called you to live. So now the only permission you need is to God and say, God, I need to understand what do I need to do here? How do you want me to do this? When he says, do it, run with him and watch him make it happen because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. It's all about him. It's all about you accepting the challenge that he's giving you and saying, God, show me what I need to do and how I need to do it, who I need to talk to. Who. That's how you go about your life because he set you free and that freedom is the empowerment you need to do everything he's called you to do. So that's why when we're out there in the Ukraine, you see these people and they said, no, 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 no. You're coming at us, but every mother, child, grandma decided I'm gonna get my gun and I'm gonna fight you because you're not gonna put me back into what we came from. What we came from was poverty, abject poverty, where everybody had to be in a food line trying to get food while the people in the government were rich. I mean, not just rich, filthy rich. And when you understand that, they said, no, 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 no. We like to take care of our own lives. We're going to take this now. You come to fight us. We all come in the streets to fight you because you're not going to put us back into that. That's what freedom does to you. You fight for it. That's why when we're Christians, we have to stay praying. The Bible says, pray always, watch always. The devil, your adversary comes as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may destroy. He's coming at you 24 seven to take away that freedom. And you have to fight for it. You have to say, God, for God, I live, for God, I die. I will not be in bondage to sin. I will not be in bondage to the devil. I will not live a mediocre life because Jesus died to make me free. And I'm going to live free. I just, every time I talk about it, I think about this movie, Die Hard, because I've seen every one of the, um, in the sequels, I've seen every one of them, because I love, love Bruce Willis. He had a little, he's a little rough there on the edge, but I love it. So, and the one, I think when, I'm not sure if it was the last one or the one before the last, where it says, live free or die hard. And one time I heard that and I, it hit my spirit. If we don't live and embrace the freedom that God gave to, came to give us, we're going to die a hard death. People who don't live free from, who don't uh, uh, embrace the freedom of living free from drugs that end up going to take drugs, well, some of them end up dying prematurely because they didn't understand the value of being free living drug free and enjoying the freedom that's in that where you're not caught up in drugs caught up in sexual addictions caught up in all these different things you are free live in that and embrace it because if you don't you're going to die hard and i always love the title of that one movie live free or die hard and so many people are out there dying hard because they don't understand the freedom that god came to give them they don't embrace it I always say, even us in the West, we are, we are spoiled because we have been always free. We could go wherever we want. We could do whatever we want to do. We can say whatever we want to do. We can start our own businesses. We can do all these different things. And nobody has to tell us how many children to have, how many children not to have. We're free. And so we take that for granted. So because we've always been free, we don't recognize the signs of bondage. And that's another problem. Because there are always people, just like the devil is always coming to, to, to take away our freedom that God has come to give us. There's always people in the world, different countries who want to take away the freedom we have here because the freedom we have here is so abundant and it's so powerful and it's, it liberates people to the point where people just want to come over here and almost like we have to create, we have a whole issue now with the borders and everything because everybody wants to come over here. But if we allow anybody and everybody to come here, that could also hinder our freedom because you think of mon monetary and economics and all that different stuff. So we have to guard our freedom here and we can't take it for granted. See, that's, I think that sometimes when you have a lot, you take things for granted and other people who don't even have half of that are like, oh my God, if I could get there and get what they have, who would I do with that? And that's what we have to, we cannot ever take the freedom for granted. 
it's supposed to empower us, but not at the same time debilitate us because we're not thinking clearly, because we don't have perception, because we don't have insight, because we don't have appreciation, because we're not thankful. So it's important for us to understand the power we have and to understand the value that's in the freedom that we have and for us to embrace it and run with it and preserve it at any cost. Because that's what people, God can, Jesus died to give us. And a lot of people died to ensure that we're free today. A lot of men and women have died for the freedoms that we have today that we don't even understand it. Just like I was showing you on the website, the, even the women's history, women since 1908 have been fighting for women's rights, for freedom to vote, for equal rights, for being able to have their own. Today, I mean, the fact that I can even have my own multiple, the businesses that we have just to have this program, just to have Father Reach, just to have Father Consulting, just to have that is a right. Women couldn't have businesses before. I mean, we could barely leave the house to work. It was, I was like, but good God, what in the world was this? They frowned upon even going to work, even over here, what was it, Palestine, where that young child was trying to get an education and they shot her in the head because she wanted to go to school and she just happened to live. And now she's all over the place in the London and everywhere advocating for, for women's rights because, and that was just 2012 or something like this. They shot her in the head because she wanted to go to school. Like I can't even fathom that. I mean, I've been trained <laughs> to go to school and do well all my life. It wasn't an option. It was like, you go to school and you learn and you do well. It wasn't just going to school. And so this little girl just got shot for it, but thank God she made it. And now she, I think she just graduated from college and it was such a big thing. They made, it made a big, uh, it, it was all in the media just to get an education. So these women have been fighting for years to get us to where we're just to have your own business just to be able to drive a car, just to be able to vote. I can't even understand that. But these are things that people fought for. These are freedoms that they fought for. And so we have to embrace it, understand it, appreciate it, and stand on the lookout to make sure that it's not infringed upon again. And that's what the Bible says. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage because you're not perceptive, because you're not thinking, because you're not understanding, because you don't discern the times. Jesus said, discern the times for they are evil. We have to understand the time. These are the last days. Things are not getting better. They're getting worse. And that's true prophecy. And so we have to understand the times you're living and understand what God said and understand what he's saying uh, what he said would happen would happen and understand now what he wants us to do and what's the part that we have to play in ensuring that freedom is maintained and preserved everywhere we go. Okay, now you know everybody can have my little pointers. One, freedom builds confidence. Confidence. If you don't understand it, just me talking to you, I feel so confident. I'm like, I have the freedom to vote. I have the freedom to have businesses. I have the freedom to go to school. That is confidence because in countries where this does not exist, you don't have confidence to even say it on a, a platform like this on the internet where people can hear you. That could get you killed. And I think it was, I remember I, I mentioned to you about this other story I saw even in Africa, like it was around the same time as that little girl where they did not want the girl to go to school. They wanted her to stay helping her dad in the fishery business. And she was fighting and they almost wanted to, to, they, she was in prison. They brought her into a, uh, made her get marry her after some old man. And he had her in some, I mean, this girl was like 13, 14 years old. And she was in prison because she, they married her. So he would be able to keep a grip on her. So she wouldn't do what she, she wouldn't go to school and she wouldn't learn like she wanted to. And she fought that anyway. And I think they almost beat her up, but she escaped and she made it because of one teacher. And one thing that motivated her was th that little girl in Palestine that got shot in the head and still lived and was going to school and was fighting for women's rights. That was something that motivated her. And she kept on going and she made it to college and she graduated and they had a big thing about it. But, and I saw the movie, I was like, oh my God, that's just the other day. Cause that happened after the girl in Palestine and the girl in Palestine, I think it was 2012 or 14, somewhere around there. So this is just the other day. So people all over the world are still fighting for women's rights that we don't even know about. So that's why I'm saying it, when you have confidence, like we have to just come and say, I am free to do this. It builds your confidence. 
if you don't have that freedom, you can't even talk about it. Some countries you talk about those things and they come and kill you within minutes. They're in your home, storming your house down to kill you. That's why we, what we have here, we have to embrace it and thank God for it. It builds confidence, it builds in your speech, freedom of speech, I can say whatever I want, do whatever I want, as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of others, that's part of the constitution and we have to always remember that. And even the Bible says, only use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. When you get into the flesh, the words of the flesh or the, 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 what is it? the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride, pride of life. So now you're infringing on other people because it makes you feel good or whatever it does to you. Use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Don't infringe on the rights of others. That's the only limitation that the constitution puts on there. Your freedom cannot keep people bound. Your freedom is not supposed to be used to keep others bound. It's supposed to free others and keep others free. Then you have freedom of religion. We can worship God in where we can. We can lift up our hands and worship God. Now, there's some religions that don't particularly do uh, the nicest things. And although they're not very free, we still have to allow them the right to operate because it's freedom of religion. But the thing is, when you worship God and lift up his name, he gives you ways and means of reaching out to these people and showing, showing them the love of God. And that love frees them from all the negativity that they're... That they're <sighs> dispelling to others in the name of whatever God it is they serve. So, and that's where you, that's why the Bible says, love people, love them into freedom, love them into righteousness. You have the freedom of press where we can be on Facebook, where we can have our newspapers, where we can, that's why it's important to allow, we cannot allow things to cancel and to, to stop things and all like this. So we have to allow freedom of press, even if it's not always the things that we like. Again, with the restrict, only restriction, do not infringe on the rights of others. When we infringe on the rights of others, then we're no longer uh, promoting freedom. We are free and using our freedom to entangle others. That's not what freedom is supposed to do. Freedom is supposed to promote freedom in ourselves and for others, always. And that's one of the, get if you see something in the name of freedom and it's not allowing other people to be free, run. That ain't freedom, that's something else. That's a man-made situation. Then you have freedom to create and produce. That's one of the main things in our country that people flock to, is that people can have their own businesses. People can create their own products. People can create a, 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 a brand for themselves. People can do things independent of the government. No one has to tell them what to do, not to do, as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of others. And that's all the only restriction. And so that is something we have to embrace. The fact that you can have your own business, the fact that you can work if you want to or have your own business, that's a choice that not everybody has. It builds confidence in our economics, in our business, be your business. It builds confidence in that area. It builds confidence in our mental freedom. You are free in your mind. You can think big. You can create big. You can be innovative. You don't have to feel, well, I can't do this because this one said I can't do it and I'm afraid to do it because, no, 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 you're free. Your mind is free. You don't have to be oppressed because one thing with countries where they're not, a, people are oppressed, they're afraid, they're walking around on eggshells because they, any little thing can turn this one off and send people at them. Free in your mind, the mental freedom that God gives you. Then physical and health freedom, you're free in your body. You're free to be healthy. You can do things to build up, make sure your bodies are healthy and strong. You're eating the right foods. You're exercising. You're, you're going to your, your, you get to your doctors and see what, what, make sure everything's working good. Health freedom. He I don't know if you call it health freedom, healthcare freedom. I don't know what it is. You can get healthcare. You just keep your bodies whole because that's the most important thing you have. If your bodies are not whole, nothing else is going to make any sense. If you don't have your health, all the money in the world will make any sense because you are not healthy. You're not free to go as you want. Do what you want. Take care of your bodies. Take care of your minds. Read the right books. Watch the right uh, entertainment or movies or whatever. Watch things that build you up. Read and listen to things that build you up like books and audio books. Build yourself up from the inner man. That builds your confidence. Next, freedom builds value value you have everybody has empowered value when you're free it helps to build that value 
and it no longer makes you feel like, oh, I'm less than or I'm lower than. No, if it's doing that, it's not freedom. See, these are the clues you have to look for in things and what people say and what they do and where they take you and all that different stuff. Look for these. Build value, one value, human rights. You have a human right as an individual to be treated with respect, to be allowed to be productive, to be allowed to say things, as long as what you do does not infringe on the rights of others. That's the disclaimer right there. You are free as long as you're not using your liberty as an occasion to the flesh and to infringe your, your own rights or whatever on others. You are free. You have human rights. You have a right to be treated well. You have a right to be treated to health. You have a right to be treated uh, uh, to, to, to make sure that what your, your possessions are not uh, 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 taken from you and, and given to other people. No, what you create is yours. You have that right. So always never let people infringe on your rights and put you into human trafficking and make you sell your body to do all these kinds of things and make you, you like they own you. Nobody owns nobody. You own things, you don't own people. And when you get to the position where you're trying to own people, that's where you're getting into problems because now you're infringing your rights on others. You own things, not people. God created man to dominate the earth, not man. Man was supposed to manage things and animals, not people, ever. And when that happened, you notice when that happened was after slavery. Now, after slavery, sorry, after Adam and Eve sinned. That's when the world started going hell to skelter because now they fell out of their purpose. They fell out of the plan. They had to now cover up the sin that they did, cover up everything they did. So now they were doing things out of whack. They were doing things out of nature, not what God wanted. So they could try to fix things and cover up things to make it look good, not be good. It builds value in your self-esteem. You have now you have self-esteem. You can walk around and say, I have value. I have empowered value. So if that empowered value, I can empower others and empower the value in others. And I can think of myself as God thinks of me. I can see myself as the unique, uh, a powerful human being that God has created me to be because I'm a child of God and I can do what God says I can do. I can be what God says I can be. I can go where God says I can go. I could say what God says I can say. These are things that come when you have the freedom that comes with Christ. So it builds up your self-esteem. So you're confident. It builds value economically. When people are empowered, sorry, when people are empowered and they're free, they now can go and say, I need, I, I, I need, and that's what financial freedom, and I'm glad I said freedom, financial freedom does. It now empowers you to say, I don't have to depend on people to do anything. God has given me the ability now to create wealth. See, that's what the Bible says. I have given you the power to get or create wealth. And I always read that scripture and I'm like, God, how can you do it? You do it with your jobs. You do it with a creative ability. God will show you ways to create income. And that's a financial freedom to passive income that can take care of you for the rest of your life where you don't have to be working like a slave for money, but money's working for you. That is where you, that's where we get with our business and we're working on financial freedom. So now you're not just working till the end of your days to make a paycheck. Now you get money and that money's working for you. That is the goal, economically. And so when you wonder how all these wealthy people, that's why I tell people, don't knock people who are wealthy. If they're getting it ill gain and if they're not doing it the right way, but believe me, karma's coming. They're going to get it because Bible said you, can, you reap what you sow. So they're going to get their own. But don't let that keep, make you criticize them to the point where now you're not trying to understand how you now can build up yourself and become financially free. That's why I'm always happy for people. You have money. I'm so happy for you. I hope you made it the right way and you're not loving it, but you're loving God. Because if you're loving God, then you're getting it the right way and you're using it the right way. You're not putting it above God. But if you're getting it, my butt, go and show me how you get what you got. I heard one, um, I think he was a boxer, and, uh, and a big time boxer. And he was saying when, when he became... So the boxing started making money and people were showing him, come and show him how they have these cars and they have all this money. He said, don't show me what you have. Show me how you got what you have so I can get it. That's like teaching, not giving the person a fish, teaching them how to fish. That's what you want. So they showed him how to do it and he's doing it and now he's making his money. So it's not about being jealous of people and what they have. It's about saying, okay, this is what I'd like. I like how I'm free. you're free and I like how you get. Now show me how to do that same thing. And when they show you, you now can create wealth. 
That's what it's about. So you're never envious of people. You're never knocking people for what they have. You're just saying, okay, I like that. And I'm making sure, always make sure you're doing it the right way. So my parents always told me, don't be jealous of people because you don't know how they, how they got what they have and what they're doing to keep it. Always make sure whatever you're doing, you're doing it the right way and the legal way and the God way. Because then if it's done the God way, you'll never end up in covetousness. You'll never end up in, in greed and theft and all these kind of crazy embezzlement and all that. No, when you do it the God way, it has purpose. Whatever you create has purpose. So you won't be using it to do negativity and to bring in down the value in others. When you steal from people, you're bringing down the value or you're trying to anyway. When you embezzle, you're bringing down the value. When you're cutting people down, you're bringing down the value. When you're covetous and all that kind of crazy stuff, you're trying to bring down people's value. And that's why I said, if you do that, you don't understand your empowered value. When you don't understand that, you infringe on others to try to create, whereas God has already given it to you. You don't have to do a thing, but just be who he's called you to be. Okay, this is getting good. I'm enjoying this. You can build value spiritually. You stay in the word of God and God builds you up to understand who you are, to understand the freedom Jesus has given you, to understand how you can speak and you can create and you can do different things that God has called you to do. So now you're spiritually free. Your spiritual value is high because you're a spirit being. So you have to build up your spirit man. Because if your spirit man is not built, then your physical man is weak. You're just a shell walking around. Like no, I feel like I'm just a shell walking around. If your spirit man is weak, you're literally a shell because your body's not you. No matter how good looking you are, no matter how fine you are, no matter what you have, what you wear, your body's not you. Your body's the part that's decaying as we speak every day until the day you die. Your spirit is what lives forever and ever. So that's where you got to build up. Because as goes your spirit, so goes your body. If your mind is healed and your, your spirit is whole, then the actions you take in your body is going to make sure that you're whole. You're going to eat right, exercise right, treat people right, go to the right places. You're, you're going to treat your body right when your spirit's right. Build up value in your spirit, man. That's what freedom always promotes. Building up value in our spirit, man. Then freedom promotes independence. It makes you independent. You're not dependent on people and things and situations. You're dependent only on God. Say, God, what do you want for me today? How do you want me to do this today? How do you want me to be? Who do you want me to meet today? Who do you have for me to bless today? What can I do to bring glory to the kingdom of God today? When you're free, that's what you're doing. You're independent from people. You're not giving yourself to people. You're serving people. You're ministering to people. Your life is servitude because you're not being a blessing everywhere you go, but you're not dependent on people and what they think of you, what they want you to do. It's all dependent on God. So if nobody likes you today, you can still be a blessing. If nobody treats you good, you can still walk in love. You can still walk in the joy of the Lord because it's not dependent on people. And that's why it's so important for us to understand who we are in Christ so we can be independent, walk in true independence. Next, it promotes productivity. Freedom promotes productivity. That's why people are flush in this country. They can do whatever. They can be creative. They can create their business. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of competition and some people still try to infringe. But because you have the freedom, you can now create and out, uh, how do you call it? Outperform the competitors. And, and one thing that com- you have to look at competition sometimes, it keeps you from monopoly. Because when you have monopolies, that means only one person controls everything. So nobody can be free. When one person controls everything, they control the quality. They control how much is produced. They control who gets what's produced. Whereas if you have other people producing it, competition always brings up the, 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 I think it brings out the best in others because then it says, okay, you're not the only one doing it, so you got to up your game because this one over there is doing it, so we can't just give any mediocre thing to the people. And that's how I look at the competition, healthy competition. Now there's greed and all that. I wouldn't even call that competition. I call that crazy. But if you have healthy where everybody's free to create and to do things, then everybody, it builds up, it, it, it promotes other, I got to step up my game. Do you see what they're doing over there? That thing is other out of this world. So you got to step up your game because you're not just sit on your laurels with, well, I have the only thing and nobody can get it but me. So I'll just give them any crazy thing I want to and they have to take it. No. And that's what freedom does. It promotes creativity. It tells people, okay, there's a vacuum here. You can create this here and see how you can help people here. Like I was just looking at Shark Tank and I saw these young ladies with this um, 
makeup line that they created for people of color. And I didn't know that a lot of models of color have, have to bring their own, their own makeup to the, 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 the shoot or whatever, because the makeup artists don't have colors for their skin color or to, for their texture, whatever it is. So they have to bring their own that they have from home. So these ladies saw the, saw the need and they created their own line of, of, of makeup. And I think it's, um, it's not just um, the concealer and the, God, what's the thing? I can't, I word every day, I can't remember it. It's not just the concealer and that other, I forgot the name of it, but it's every, they have different skincare for the women of color. And they have them the very light skin, even to the white, to very dark skin. And so everybody's included. So now people have healthy makeup and it's clean makeup, but they make with clean products, not like the, some have all kind of, even some people even put uh, baby's embryo, stuff from the embryo into the makeup. I didn't know people did that for lipsticks and stuff. So now they have clean products. I guess they're plant-based, I'm not sure. And it's all different things that can help your skin as well as give you very nice, uh, flawless look for your makeup. But it's for women of every color. They saw the vacuum, they saw the need, and they created a product to fulfill that need. And that is what it's all about. Freedom to see a need and solve the problem without feeling like you can't do it and only one person can do it. That's what freedom does. Freedom builds dignity. People now feel good. Now you have, you have, you have economics, you have money as a family. You can now feel like good about yourself. I have produced this. I have done this. I have used my creativity to do this. And I feel good about myself. As opposed to feeling you're nothing and you can do nothing, you're useless and nobody's going to give you a break and you're never going to get anywhere. No. Freedom builds dignity. Next, freedom motivates to liberate others. You must always want others to enjoy the same freedoms that you enjoy. That's what the gospel is about. We have to share the gospel. Once God sets you free and you get saved, now you have to share that with others so they can enjoy the freedom that God has called us to have. We have to always seek. That's why the one part of the Bible, love your neighbor as yourself. You can't be free and then want others not to be free so you can be lording it over them. That's not true freedom. You're not free in your spirit, man, so you're acting crazy in your natural man. True freedom always wants to liberate others. That's why people always look at America to free them as countries when because they're not as powerful, they don't have as much uh, a weaponry as we do. So now they always look to us to freedom. Now, sometimes we have to pick those battles because sometimes they can become a problem. But it's a good thing to know that people see us as people who want to help liberate others into their freedom, into what God has called them to, into their natural born privilege. It's a privilege that we have as humans to be free. And so it's always a good thing when you are known as a person who liberates others. Freedom motivates the defense of freedom. You have to defend freedom at any cost. You can't let freedom go. And sometimes we may think, well, oh, well, that's their problem. But I always say, if it happens to them, believe you me, it's coming to you. Because that's the, that's the way man works. If they see they can get away with a little inch, believe me, they come and take the whole mile and the whole road and the whole situation, the whole highway. That's how man works. That's how the devil works. If they see they can get away with a little bit, you think they would just stop there? No, they're coming. So that's why we have to defend freedom. We have to create avenues to defend freedom and to maintain it. And it all starts in our spirit and in our minds. Then freedom motivates thanksgiving. You're thankful to God and you're thankful to others. It always makes you thankful. God, I thank you for my freedom. I think that I can do this. I can do that. I could be a blessing here. I can do this for this one. I can do for that. I thank you for my family. I thank you. And then you always thank, you're always thankful to the people who help you maintain your freedom or who liberate you. You're always thankful. Freedom makes you so thankful. Like everything you're like, oh my God, I have this. I get to have this. I get to be with these people. I get to. And it, it just makes you so uh, um, enamored and just thankful for all that God has given you, all people have done for you, all that you are able to do now. Freedom always motivates thankfulness. And so we must always continue to maintain a thankful heart, a thankful desire, a thankful motivation. It should be our, st our stance in life, a heart of gratitude, a heart of thankfulness. Now that we have all this going on, that we always have to have our action plan. Every day, based on what we talk about, we're looking for our action plan. And today, first question, do you know that you are free? 
Now, remember, we're doing this. You, you write the question down. If you can't answer it in the time we have, then you could do it afterwards and just do your, your little journaling. Do you know that you are free? <coughs> now, don't just say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Think about it for a minute and think, do you really know you're free? Not just saying, you got to know it because a lot of times we say things, but our actions don't show that we believe it. Because I always try to figure out, if somebody understands they're free, land of the free home of the brig, how do you allow somebody to subject you to prostitution, to, 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 um, to human trafficking, to doing illicit things, to drug addiction? If you really know you are free, those things, you will fight to make sure those things do not give you, put you in bondage because you love your freedom. So if you know you are free, and the next question, how do you demonstrate your freedom? Now, these are questions to take introspection, deep introspection into yourself. How do you demonstrate your freedom? Write it down, look at it, analyze it, analyze yourself. Then number three, are you helping others to obtain or maintain their true freedom? Are you helping others to obtain or maintain their true freedom? Are you building up freedom or are you usurping your authority on people to keep them from being free? Fourth question, how are you liberating others? And that these are things you have to write down. What are you doing? What are the actions you're taking, you're taking to help liberate others? And that could be in your mind, in their bodies, in their spirits. How are you liberating others? Next question, what innovative ideas do you have for promoting freedom at home and abroad? What innovative ideas do you have for promoting freedom at home and abroad? And write those down. Because a lot of times we have a lot of things, oh, I can't believe they're doing this. I can't believe they're doing that. But we don't see how we can be the solution to those problems. Because we think, oh, that's too big for me. I'm a little old here. I can't do this. Who? Write down your ideas and always say, God, if these ideas need to go further, lead me to the person that I need to give it to so I can build up that freedom. That's what we're doing with Father Reach. We saw a problem with human trafficking and say, God, we want to we wanna in, we wanna, uh, infiltrate that and bring freedom to others. And then you just sit there and God gives you all these ideas. And then we come with a campaign and then we're going forth and doing different things in the campaign. We create products so we could get uh, items so we can help liberate others and prepare others for their freedom. That's what freedom does. It makes you free to live your best life. And finally, you are empowered. Whatever God has called you to do, whatever he's shown you to do, you are empowered. He gave you that right. From the time you were born, he created you with that privilege and that right and empowerment to do everything he's called you to do. And let nothing and no one stop you because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So don't allow things or situations or circumstances to try to deter you from what God has called you to do. If he has made you free, you are free indeed. And let nothing stop you and always help others. When you see others going through situations, say, you know what? I know you're going through, but God has made you free. And if he's made you free, you are free indeed. So stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We want to thank you for being with us. We hope this blessed your heart. And you see all the things going on in the media right now. You could just say, God, show me what, what needs to be done. Show me what, 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 who I can minister to and help share an idea with. That could help liberate the people. Even right now, we pray for them right now. We pray for freedom for that country, oh God. And that you'd bring liberation to every person, oh Father God. And you deliver them from this bondage that's trying to attack them. And we thank you that you will be glorified. And that every work of darkness would be, um, would be exposed and annihilated violated in the name of Jesus. And these people would enjoy the freedom that you came to give them. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you for it. And we just want to thank you for allowing us, oh God, even in this time, to be able to minister to people and to show them what you want them to do, God. Continue to bless the people and continue to minister to them. And we want to thank you for being with us again. And we hope that you continue to enjoy the freedom God has called you to live and walk in the empowered freedom and allow it to empower you to empower others. Until we see you next time, continue to have Father Conversations. Bye-bye.